What's more important in a film, story or spectacle? It's a debate as old as the medium itself. Can a film dazzle yet still emotionally and intellectually engage with the audience? And what role does cutting play in this process? I'm Chris. And I'm Leon. Welcome back to Film Editing Pro's four-part series, What Drives the Cut? Quick note, for a steady stream of new tutorials from professional Hollywood editors, be sure to subscribe to the Film Editing Pro channel and turn on notifications. Okay, let's begin. In part one, we examined the evolution of film editing as an art form. And in part two, we analyzed how cuts can engage the audience and lead them through the film. In this video, we're going to explore the difference between cutting for story and cutting for spectacle by looking at the way two scenes with similar content have been edited quite differently. Our subject matter of choice? A car chase. This might seem counterintuitive, but action is actually quite a fantastic genre for studying the art of editing and storytelling. Action is about causality, events that are linked together, cause and effect. This happened, therefore, that happened. Good action follows this pattern. For example, You can't win. Bond activated the conveyor, allowing him to escape. He shot out the barrels, which rained down on the bad guys. The conveyor took him to the runway, where Bond now decides to hijack a plane. Our first scene is the penultimate car chase from Too Fast, Too Furious. First, the setup. In order to pull off the heist, Brian and Roman, the good guys, are being forced to team up with Enrique and Roberto, the bad guy's henchmen. Here we go. Yeah, so you know what to do. Stay cool. Keep focused. Remember, the airstrip's off Nallwood Avenue. It's the third exit after the bridge. Got it. So what up, man? You ready for this? Come on, man. Guns, murderers, and crooked cops. I was made for this, bro. Superfluous bro dialogue is exchanged. Although the scene is short, the story stagnates because events aren't linked in a meaningful manner. And then there's staring. Lots of it. They move on to the pickup, and then do some more staring. Come on. Eventually, the chase begins. Cuts are frequent and fast. Our perspective moves rapidly between different cars, different drivers, and is even interspersed with aerial shots. The cuts in this scene do not progress the story, which can be described as cars driving fast in a straight line. I've got him heading south on I-95. Bring in the aerial ESDs. Many shots repeat information that the audience has already seen. At best, the cuts add kinetic energy and tension to the chase. At worst, they become monotonous and boring. Oh, shit. They're catching up, man! Shut up, man! The scene is a bit too light on story and a bit too heavy on spectacle. In fact, leave the room, grab yourself a snack and come back a full minute or two later and you probably won't have missed a thing. Brian and Roman compete for the lead and throw their cars around corners without any apparent reason. This corner alone is covered with seven distinct cuts. We'll revisit that later in our final analysis. But right now, it's time for the second movie, Jack Reacher. The car chase we're looking at here falls at a similar point in this movie, at the end of the second act. But it's edited very differently. First, the build-up. To his surprise, Jack returns to his motel to find that he's been framed for the murder of a young girl. Watch as Jack pieces the facts together. He prematurely stops his car and stares off camera, encouraging the audience to ask, what is he looking at? The subsequent shots provide the answer in the form of his POV. A close-up confirms his suspicion. 
How will Jack respond? His mind begins to work. A new character enters the scene, Detective Emerson, who suspects Jack to be the murderer. They lock gazes, leaving the audience to wonder what they'll do. Subtle head movements hint at their decisions. A clenched fist signals anger. A hand on the gear stick indicates flight. The scene has perfectly set up the ensuing car chase and established the main character's motives and emotions. The chase begins. Cuts are infrequent and usually in response to action within the scene. For example, the turn of a corner, the approach of the police cars, the approach of the bridge, or when Jack rams the bad guys, we are rewarded with a view of how they react. The chase progresses over bridges, through tunnels, and into back streets. Look away for a moment and you'll lose track of the plot. Every shot has a specific purpose. As a result, each cut commands the audience's attention. Finally, Jack realizes that he's fighting a losing battle. He pulls into a crowded street. We see Jack's POV, and then a close-up indicates that he's thinking. The audience wonders, what's he got planned? Each successive shot drip feeds the audience vital information. A bus, a crowd, the pursuing helicopter. Unanswered questions compel the audience to continue watching. What does this all mean? How will Jack escape? The scene concludes delivering a satisfying payoff. So what have we learned? Let's look at the edits. Too Fast, Too Furious relies on fast and furious cutting. Individual shots tend to lack meaning and instead the film relies on an abundance of edits to generate tension and maintain energy. Because everything stands out, nothing stands out. It's spectacular, but it lacks any deeper meaning than simply looking cool. As a result, the cut's power is greatly diminished and the viewer's eyes glaze over a bit. The viewer is thinking, I want to know if they get away, but there's no particular meaning to the events in between. Now, something important to remember. Spectacle is all about exhilaration. It's visually striking and enjoyable to watch. It gets the heart pumping. Story, on the other hand, engages the viewer on a deeper level. It gets their mind thinking. Does Too Fast, Too Furious get your mind thinking, or does it get your heart pumping? We'd say the latter. If story is flavor, then sugar is spectacle. I love sweet food, but a dish without flavor is just sickly. Sugar is best when it's used to enhance a dish that is already flavorful. A good edit needs ingredients like story, logic, or intrigue. Once it's got those ingredients, then you can sweeten it with spectacle. When you balance sweetness with flavor, then you've really got something special. 
You could say Too Fast, Too Furious' editing is too sugary. Now, hey, we're not trying to be down on the Fast and Furious franchise. They're entertaining to watch and incredibly popular. But either way, the cut is not being used to its full potential. Jack Reacher, on the other hand, is sweet, but also very flavorful. The editing is razor sharp and carefully and deliberately reveals information in a manner that encourages the audience to ask questions, building anticipation for shots to come. This is particularly evident during the opening buildup. Every shot serves a distinct purpose, giving clarity to the action, and the connection that each cut makes burns memorable moments into the minds of the audience. The scene is just as tense and exhilarating to watch, and while it does use rapid cutting in places to heighten the tension, it's able to achieve more with less because the story is considered with every single edit. So how can you make each cut matter? That's gonna be the focus of part four in the series, where we're gonna look at how the editor can use cuts to pose questions and provide answers, compelling the viewer to keep watching. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics, like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.